Welcome back to Chess Dog. Today we remember that old quote from Bobby Fischer that in order to get squares on the chessboard, you got to give squares. Well, in this game from Wesley So, that is exactly what happens when he plays the Sveshnikov opening, which is all about giving squares and getting squares in return. His opponent is Kwa Bao. This was played in 2007, I believe one year before Wesley So became a grandmaster. Let's jump right in. Wesley So has the black pieces. Uh, Kwa Bao has white, e4 is played, and quickly we do get the Sveshnikov Sicilian on the board with the move e5. Now it creates a big fat weakness on d5, but it controls very important central squares. He's getting squares, he's giving squares. Knight goes to b5, threatening to pop into d6 with check. So black plays d6 first, but you notice these light squared weaknesses on d5 and f5. Now, bishop to g5, what white wants to do is chop on f6 and then play a knight into d5 so that this knight can't take it. For example, if black just plays bishop to e7, he's basically already lost. Bishop takes, you yeah, knight d5, the knights are crashing in on uh, c7, and the game is basically already over. Uh, Wesley, so well aware of all of this, plays the line a6, the main line, knight to a3 and b5, already threatening b4, winning a piece, so the knight moves to d5. And now bishop to e7, and white chops that knight. That's the common idea to enhance the control over d5. Black, in this case, takes with the bishop. You can take with the pawn. That's also playable. And c3, keeping this knight out of the d4 square. Castles a knight to c2. White wants to reroute this knight to e3 to enhance his control of these two weak light squares. Wesley so plays rook to b8. Black basically has two pawn breaks in this opening. Uh, b5, b4 is one of them. The other is f5. Bishop to e2. And now bishop to g5. Notice how Wesley So is taking this bishop, which is technically bad because these two central pawns are on the same color, the dark squares, but he's moving it and he's putting it on a very active diagonal and clearing the way for a potential f7, f5 push for counterplay. Uh, bishop to g4 offering to trade off one of those bishops so black doesn't have the bishop pair anymore and enhance control over the light square. So Wesley so plays bishop to e6. Now, if white takes the bishop, then he just takes with the pawn and plugs up those holes, and he's in good shape. So knight c to e3 was played instead. g6, again, that prepares this f5 push. And h4, white sacrifices a pawn to open up the H file. By the way, if you're getting value from this video, be sure to hit the uh, subscribe and like button for future videos. Now, uh, Wesley so could turn down the offered pawn, but in that case, white gets counterplay anyway, and black doesn't have a pawn. So instead, he goes ahead and grabs the pawn, opening up the H file, and now queen to F3. What white wants to do is shift that queen over to the H file, and then with the rook and queen to deliver mate on H7, if the bishop at h4 moves. So the king goes to g7. Now the rook can shift over to h8. Queen to h3, threatening the bishop. And now Wesley so plays. First, bishop takes g4. Now knight takes g4 is played, and there's only one move that Wesley so can make in this position to survive. Do you see it? That's right, it is the counterattacking move, h5. You can't move the bishop, obviously, because then you just take on h7. So the counterattacking move h5, not only does it close up the file, but it also counterattacks the knight on g4. So queen takes bishop, queen takes, rook takes, pawn takes knight, rook takes g4. So white has recovered the pawn that he originally sacrificed on h4, but this rook on g4 is very awkwardly placed, and we'll see if Wesley So can take some advantage of that. And now he begins to play his second pawn break, b4, basically a minority attack on the queen side where you use two pawns to attack a majority of three pawns. You trade them off, you're left with one weakness and you can attack those, those pawns. Um, the best move for white here is actually rook to g3, so that if black takes on c3, rook takes c3, he's counterattacking the knight on c6, so there's no time to take the pawn on b2, and this was a way for white to hold equality. But instead, Wesley So's opponent played knight takes b4. And this is a mistake because it opens up the b file and now black's rooks get real serious activity. Knight takes b4, cb4, and rook to b4. 
He's already threatening to win the pawn on b2. So long castle. Now the king defends this pawn, but after rook to c8 check, that king can, that king can still be attacked. Even though black only has rooks on the board, you can still get counterplay against that king. The king moves over to b1. And now f5, a very strong move. The second main pawn break in the Sveshnikov, taking advantage of the fact that there's a pin along this uh, white's fourth rank. So you can't take the pawn, obviously, because you just lose the rook. So a very powerful move by Wesley. So uh, rook to h4. He wants to stay in contact with this pawn, if at all possible. Rook to c6, defending the d6 pawn, which was under attack from the rook at d1. F3, and now G5. What he wants to do is push this rook away from this pawn on E4, so now he can take that pawn. Uh, rook to H5 was a possibility after King G6, Rook DH1. It looks like White would be getting a lot of counterplay down this H file, but in fact, after pawn takes pawn on E4, Black would be in very good shape because the king could always hide at, on this F5 square. So uh, that attempted activity in this position wouldn't quite work. So he moves the rook away, and now pawn takes pawn, and Wesley so has one material. He's now up a pawn. Instead of immediately recapturing, white plays a3 to sort of unsettle this rook at b4, but now just rook moves to d4, protected by the pawn with an offer of an exchange. Now white plays rook d to h1, hoping beyond hope that he can get enough counterplay along the h file and harass black's king and survive the position. EF3, rook h7 check, king up, rook 1 h6 check, and now that f5 square is where black's king goes. King, uh, rook to f7 check, king e4, pawn takes pawn with check, and king to d5. And it looks like black's king is safe on the d5 square, but white still has tricks. So black has to be very careful here. Rook to g6 immediately, uh, attacking the g5 pawn. In this position, Wesley So plays rook to f4, offering an exchange of rooks and attacking the pawn on f3. And if rook takes f4, he would just take with the g pawn, and this is a dominating position. Black is just completely winning. His rook cuts off uh, white's king, and he's got this mass of pawns in the middle of the board. Black is just is completely winning. So instead, Rook to b7. He says, I'm going to give you the f3 pawn, but I'm going to have to try to get activity for my rooks. Rook takes f3, now rook takes g5. And here computers like to move rook to f2. They say that's the strongest, keeping this king pinned on the back rank. But instead, Wesley so plays a5. He wants to play the pawn to a4, help control this b3 square. Uh, rook to a7 was a decent response. Uh, his opponent plays rook to g6, which is actually quite sneaky uh, when you look at it. The idea, let's say, uh, it's white's move here. He can play rook to b5 check, attacking the king and the pawn at a5. And if black tries to save the material with rook to c5, the rook just moves back to b6, attacking d6, and it would just be a repetition. So uh, this is a very serious threat. This rook to g6 is threatening to completely equalize the game. So Wesley so has to do something. He plays a4. So now after a check, the pawn would no longer be vulnerable on a5. Rook to b5 check, rook c5, rook b6, the same sort of back and forth, except in this situation, he can move his king because he doesn't have to worry about the pawn on a5 falling. Here, if rook to b4, then king to d3, rook a4, then just e4, and the position of the king and rooks is so dominating, and there's basically nothing a white can do to stop the advance of this pawn. Uh, rook to g2 was played to control the second rank, basically playing it before Wesley so can. Uh, the king goes to f5. Uh, he could play rook to f1 check here, and it would be very powerful, but it would lead to basically what happens in the game anyway. King f5, rook to d5, rook f1 check, king a2, rook c to c1, and you can see there's a threat of rook to a1 check mate, so white has to do something. b4 is played to give that king some luff, give that king a place to escape. Rook to a1 check, king to b2, rook fb1 check. Now here, if the king goes to c2, then rook to b3. Not only are you threatening to take the pawn on a3, but Wesley so would also be threatening rook to a2 check, winning the rook on g2. So that would be a very serious threat. So instead, white plays the king to c3 to avoid any second rank checks threatening this rook. 
But then after Rook takes a3 check, White goes ahead and resigns as the game is over. The threat is Rook a to b3, you take b4, and the a3 pawn just makes it to the queening square very, very easily. A dominant performance from Wesley So teaching us to get squares, you got to give them. Now, even after going over this great game from Wesley So, there's still some great chess you're missing out on. To fix that problem, believe it or not, the game you're going to want to look at is this one right here. So be sure to tune into that for some mind-blowing chess. Goodbye.